Okay guys, I got a couple videos coming your way. One's going to be about these two controllers here, which have issues with, with the D-pad, and also they have some worn down thumbsticks. So I have some replacement D-pad contacts here, and some replacement thumbsticks here. But perhaps more importantly, I have, and what this video is going to be about, is I have a 500 gigabyte drive and a 2 terabyte drive that a customer sent to me. They were trying to upgrade to the 2 terabyte drive and were having issues and thought perhaps their two terabyte drive was faulty. So what I'm gonna show you in this video is how to see if your brand new drive and or even if your old drive is faulty and basically how to get it up and running if it's not. So let's get to our desktop here. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is open a tool called Disk Management. I usually do a start run and type out disk management here and say OK. And what this allows us to do is see all the disks that we currently have attached to our system. And you can see right now I have a one terabyte SSD and then two four terabyte regular HDD drives. And the first thing we're going to do is hook up our two terabyte drive to our USB or to a, a USB 3 port. I'm using the StarTech USB 3 to SATA adapter. And we can see right here that our drive showed up almost immediately. So that's already a pretty good sign because we can see all of our partitions are in a healthy state. So we know our drive is at least working enough to properly attach to our Windows 10 computer here. Now, one thing I immediately noticed when we hooked up this drive is that there's no space on the end of the drive. So what that likely means is the person who was upgrading from 500 gigabyte to 2 terabyte used a cloning tool to try to go to the 2 terabyte drive. Now, that's one of my older processes. It, it still works, uh, but it's not something I recommend anymore. I recommend that you use my Windows partitioning script 6.1 which takes care of copying the data for you and also properly formatting and structuring the two terabyte drive so you're not manually doing it later. So we'll get to that in a little bit, but first let's see how we can check to see whether or not this drive is okay. Okay, so I've, uh, I think I've mentioned this in a few of my other videos, but it's worth mentioning again. There's two tools I would recommend. They're both free for testing whether or not your hard drive is bad. The first is a tool called C Tools for Windows. And as the name suggests, this is a tool you can use within Windows. And this is what I'm gonna be showing you here today. You just click your download link here. Again, the links will be in the description below. And we would just save our file to our downloads. Now this other tool called HDAT or HDAT2 and this is a uh, basically a DOS program that you need to create a bootable disk. If you saw in my earlier shot here, I have a disk right here that I could boot from. Now I'm not going to be covering that in this particular video. I might do a separate video on this, but basically with this tool you can repair drives that do have issues, particularly drives that have a bunch of bad sectors. And usually you'd only want to do this if you were trying to recover your drive not necessarily checking to see if your drive is good or bad. Whereas the C tools can't repair the drive, but it lets you know the state of your drive. Okay, so there's nothing wrong with using both tools, but when you have a brand new drive, it's probably less likely that it has bad sectors as much as the drive itself has a problem. Uh, I have actually had these Fire CUDA drives. I at least had one, I ordered six at a time and uh, one of the drives had come in DOA. So it is possible to get a brand new drive that has failed, uh, but it's not common. Okay, so let's pretend here we've downloaded our Seagate tools and we've run the installer. And we can see here we have an icon here. I'll go through the start menu just to show you where it winds up. There's actually a Seagate folder. And here's our C tools. And you wanna allow this software to make changes. And 
this will show up each time you first open the application regardless how many times you use it so we just want to say accept, accept. now uh, as I mentioned I'm using my StarTech USB 3 to SATA adapter and with this adapter I am able to properly scan the drives in this case here's our two terabyte drive here and the way I can tell it's a two terabyte drive basically I select it and I hover over basic tests and I can select driver information and it'll show me that well it'll show us that we here's our two terabyte drive whereas if I look at any of these other drives for instance we'll look at our four terabyte drives and again we hover over basic tests select drive information you can see here's a four terabyte drive now if you'll notice unlike disk management where we have this one terabyte SSD CTools for Seagate doesn't do anything with SSDs. It basically is for spindle drives only. Now, the other thing to mention is sometimes in the past, in fact, I've had USB adapters for SATA drives that did not allow the drive to be properly seen in CTools. Or if it did appear in CTools, a lot of the tests would have false negatives. So the tests that we'd, we're gonna, I'm going to show you here would fail even though there was nothing wrong with the drive. So just be aware of that, that sometimes depending on how your drive is connected, ideally you'd want to connect it directly to a SATA port on your system. But if you don't have one available or if you have to use an adapter like the StarTech adapter, it can work. Uh, but just be aware that this isn't necessarily a definitive test. Uh, what this can pretty much definitively tell you is if your drive is good. So if we hover over, basically click the checkbox. Oh, there are two entries for this drive as well. The the one that seems to work in my testing is the SAS. So for instance, if I select this USB and I hover over basic tests, you'll notice the smart tests are missing. Whereas if I select this item here and go over basic tests, I can do the smart check. Now, generally I like to run these three tests. So we do the smart check the short drive test and the short generic test. So let's do the smart check first. And you'll see the test status here in a second. And there we go, it passed. Like I said, if this was hooked up and you had problems with the connector, it's possible that this would fail even though there was nothing wrong with your drive. So you might want to try a few different ways or try a few different methods of connecting the drive to your system first. Okay, so we'll come over here and we'll check this box again and this time we'll do a short drive self-test okay we can see here that our short drive self-tested pass so we have one more test that will run if you want to if you're still unsure of things you can run the long generic but generally I just go as far as the short generic just to make sure that the, the drive itself is responding correctly Okay, so you can see that our two terabyte drive passed all the tests. So as far as I'm concerned, there's nothing wrong with this drive at this point. So we can move on to the next step, which, to, which is to actually copy our 500 gigabyte drive's data to the two terabyte drive. So let's get to doing that. Uh, one other thing that's worth mentioning is I'm gonna be hooking up two drives using the StarTech adapter here. And if I were to hook up both these drives at the same time, I actually had some issues with the C-Tools working properly. And I believe the reason for that is that when I hook up both drives, and we're going to look at our USB interface, you can see here it says ASMT1051. And I think the problem is when you have two USB adapters with the same model attached, C-Tools has trouble scanning both simultaneously. So what I found is if you do want to test more than one drive using the, the StarTech adapter, only connect one drive at a time. Okay, I thought that was worth mentioning. But at this point, 
we're done using C tools, so let's close this up. And what I'm going to do is hook up our 500 gigabyte drive to our system here. And there we go. Now we can see that drive. Now you can see on this 500 gigabyte drive, which does boot properly, by the way, I did test that before I took the drive out. You can see there's some unallocated space at the end of the drive, which is actually what you would expect to see for a standard Xbox One formatted drive. Even with my auto size routines, I basically round to the nearest gigabyte. So there's almost always some space left at the end of the drive. And there's certainly nothing wrong with that. It's actually very common to do that kind of thing for various reasons. But as far as the Xbox One is concerned, there's almost always unallocated space at the end of the disk. Now, one other thing I want to show you here is, uh, well, the next step we're actually going to take now is copying our 500 gig drive to our two terabyte drive. Um, it's also worth mentioning that you want to hook up the, the new drive. So in this case, it's our two terabyte drive before our 500 gigabyte drive. And I'll show you why or mention again, or mention why again in just a little bit. But let's get to using our scripts here. And I'll put this aside. So the first thing we need to do, and I already have a command prompt open. I'm going to open a new one. So I happen to have a shortcut on my desktop here to the command prompt. We're going to want to right click that and say run as administrator. Say yes. I know you can't see that box, but we're going to say yes to that. And then we're going to go to our desktop. So I'm going to CD backspace and we're going to go to users. In this case it's xfix, but put whatever user you actually are there. And desktop and Xbox One Master backslash win okay so it's going to take us right to our script and we're going to do our create xbox drive dot bat hit enter on that and here's our script now i've already made several videos on this so i'm not going to go through every step and exactly what's going on i'm just going to show you what a, a good portion of people might want to do which is go to the largest standard drive they can put in their system Okay, so for going from one drive to the next, we want to do our replace, upgrade, keep original drive data. This is for standard and non-standard, so we're going to hit B here. Uh, for our source drive, we're going to want to select our disk 4. Disk 4 is our 500 gigabyte drive. For our target drive, we want to select disk 3. Again, you can see free space is 0. Now, this is worth mentioning here. You can see that this drive has what you would expect the partition names to be in the proper order. However, our GUIDs are off. So let me show you really quick. We're going to go into our downloaded Xbox One HDD Master. Uh, again, the link to actually download this is in the description. And I've shown in some of my other videos how you download it and, and extract it to the desktop. I'm going to save you that here. But we want to go into our Win directory and we're going to open our readme underscore windows.txt and we're going to scroll down a bit basically to almost the end what I'm looking for here is the proper GUID values you should see after running our script. And if we put the two side by side here, the temp content to system update 2 should have these values. But if we look at what our 2 terabyte drive has now, we can see all these values are off. None of them match properly. Not even the disk GUID. So if this was cloned, at some point, the GUID values were reset. So I'm not exactly sure what happened. My guess is the drive was cloned and then they were somehow both attached on Windows and, and this drive was forced online. But that would just be a guess. So it's worth mentioning. So this, this is the reason why this two terabyte drive didn't work. These GUIDs are not correct. The, uh, the only, in fact, this is exactly how they should look here because this is for a two terabyte drive. 
and you would substitute this top line here for this line if it's a 500 gigabyte drive or this line if it's a one terabyte drive. Okay, so I just want to point it out. That's pretty much the source of this drive's problem and we've already shown that the drive itself is fine. So we're gonna say yes to erase all data. And here, this is something different than some of my other videos. I did a video where I made a five terabyte and, oh, I actually made, yeah, I made two Windows videos where I went to five terabyte drives and I used the option F here to auto size with a two terabyte disk GUID. So since we have an actual two terabyte drive, this time we're gonna wanna actually select option C here. So let's do that. And we'll let the process can go through here. I recommend not touching anything and just let it process. Okay, so at this point we should have our drive formatted. So let's look at disk management here make sure everything looks okay and so far so good so we can see we have our unallocated 100 gigs which is unfortunate but that's what the standard Xbox one two terabyte drive format structure calls for but we can see now we have all of our petitions named well not quite named correctly but that's a part of my script process the D stands for dupe and these are where we're going to copy the data to. I can't have the same partition names for this for two separate drives. I can't use the same partition name for two separate drives which is why we use a temporary name. Okay but at this point we can just say yes to doing the copy. Okay, I'm going to stretch this out a little bit too. A couple things that as I'm watching this process that I want to mention. The first is you can see all these driver letters here because we wind up with 10 partitions when we're copying from one drive to the next. That means that we're using 10 drive letters from the alphabet. Generally you can't use A, B, or C because C is your, your hard drive and A, B are reserved for floppy drives. And then it's likely you at least have one CD DVD drive which would take up D. So that's already four letters out of the alphabet gone, right? So you're down to 22. And then on top of that, we're gonna use 10 for this process. So I've mentioned this before, uh, but I saw some comments on it again recently in this create Xbox drive dot bat script. If you edit it, you can actually modify the drive letters used. It's at the very top of the script and you can see all the drive letters I assign here. You can change these to whatever you want so if you already have a drive assigned to a particular letter or maybe you have a network drive assigned to a particular letter you can change those those letters here. The copy process you know this these are hard-coded as well as the format process so you want to be careful to make sure that you um, aren't using a drive that already exists. So I just wanted to mention that again. The other thing that I wanted to mention while this is copying is that the, uh, the disk I showed you here, this HDAT2, and if we come over to our web browser here, HDAT2, this is our, uh, the, the tool that we use to basically repair drives or to fix bad sectors. And this was actually referred to me by someone. Um, let me get their name. Yeah, so HDAT2 is actually referred to me by Andrew Paul. Andrew Paul has a great channel. I have him linked to my channel in a few different places. This is one of my recommended channels. And he's done a couple of videos about my Windows partitioning script. And so I feel I should mention him as well. He does a lot of great videos about actually fixing hardware, particularly PlayStation 4 and Xbox One hardware, uh, changing surface mount chips, replacing HDMI ports, uh, but he's also done some stuff on replacing hard drives in the Xbox One. And then he has a great channel. I just recommend checking it out. Uh, but this is the basically the software that he recommends using to repair a drive. And the great thing about this tool is that it's free. Um, in the past, I've used something called Spinrite. 
6.0, but it's pretty dated. It hasn't been updated since 2004. It also fixes bad sectors and drives and can repair a drive that isn't working. But if I recall, it costs something like 50 or 60 bucks. So the HDAT or HD AT2 is a great tool, and I certainly recommend that. Uh, as I mentioned before, too, I'll probably do a video at some point dedicated to that because I often get Xbox One systems with faulty or bad hard drives. So it would be interesting to run it through that tool to see if they can be recovered in some way or if the data can be recovered in some way. Okay, so in the interest of saving time, I'm actually going to cut this video here. I was just looking at user content or our V partition here and realized that the drive I'm copying from is using about 337 gigabytes worth of space. So this copy process is going to take a couple hours. So in the interest of being able to get some other videos shot for you, particularly the repairing the two controls I showed you early in this video, I'm going to go off and do that and then come back to this when the copy process is complete and I'll show you how to finish preparing our two terabyte hard drive. Okay, so we're going to basically close this up here and I will stop here and we'll come back when this copy process is complete. Okay, so we got our controllers finished up, so let's get back to our hard drive process here. We have finished copying over our content. We can look back here a little bit and see exactly how much is logged. And our biggest partition, of course, is user content. So this was basically 300 gigabytes worth of data. We can see here we're going W to J. Well, that's actually system support, so that isn't even user content. So user content is this here. 75 files and see okay so that's V to I or sources yeah V to I so that's user content to D user content okay so that all looks good and I'm um, sorry I didn't record that but I had a few other things I need to do uh, to record while that was copying okay so anyways, at this point, we have our, uh, basically our drive created here and our data copied. So we'll press any key to continue, let this finish up. Okay, so at this point, we want to disconnect our 500 gigabyte drive and then run our script again to finish partitioning up our two terabyte drive. So we'll come over here and we will eject our normally named partitions. Okay, let's physically disconnect it. And now we're ready to run our script one more time to finish up our two terabyte drive. So we'll rerun create xbox drive.bat, press any key. This time we want to choose option C because we want to fix the GUID values without formatting the drive. This also renames these partitions. Okay, our target is going to be disk 3. And we want this to be a two terabyte standard, so we select option C. See already our driver letters have changed.
right, and just like that, we are done. Um, this is actually an SSHD drive. So the tendency, this guy here, the Firecuda, so the tendency is for it to process the commands we send it pretty quickly. So you can see that finished up pretty quickly there. But um, yeah, so again, we can check this against our readme windows to make sure that our GUID values match up OK. Right about here is good. Again, so this time we'll put this against what they should be and what they actually are. And we can see that everything here matches up. So at this point, we should have a perfectly fine working two terabyte drive. So I'll press any key here one more time just to finish changing the language back. Okay, and we're done. So at this point, we can see all of our partitions. Yeah, let's do this file. We'll refresh our disk management here, and we can see all the names look okay. And uh, as an extra thing too, we can even look at each one of our partitions here. We, we have our, yeah, let's refresh this as well. And we should have five. So we get temp, user, system support, system update. So we'll go, we'll look at our temp content. You can see we have stuff in here. User content, a bunch of stuff here. In fact, let's check our size. You can see our used space is 337 gigabytes, as I showed earlier on the 500 gigabyte drive, so that, that's okay. And then our system support, a bunch of stuff in here. And system update, we should have our A and B. Okay, last but not least is system update 2, which is always empty. Okay, so at this point we should be ready to put the drive into our Xbox One. I'm not actually going to do that. This video is more to show you that, uh, or show you basically how to get a two terabyte drive working, which we did. So at this point, we'll just eject the drive and get this into our Xbox One. Okay, thanks for watching my video, and I should have some more videos coming up soon particularly my Xbox One X timing videos for the different internal drives. Uh, it's still in progress. I had uh, last week I had a nor'easter which caused my power to be out for about 62 hours so I didn't really get to any of the video editing that I wanted to do. Even these two videos I just made you here were further delayed than what I wanted them to be. But in any event uh, I hope you guys will appreciate that, and at this point, we can pull our drives, and we should be good to go. So this is essentially uh, our 500 to terabyte, to 2 terabyte. Okay, we'll see you guys in my next video.